spinning, tumbling, and wobbling. So let's uh, start by looking at a uh, brick drop uh, pencil test. So in um, this uh, basic uh, drop, as the brick is falling, it's uh, turning, and that turning motion, in this case, is a simple spinning, or at least uh, until it uh, hits the ground. And uh, with simple spinning, the brick will rotate by a constant rate, uh, it's constant angle change from frame to frame, and the path of action will be a uh, parabolic arc for the, for the center of the brick. Uh, here's another example for a hammer being thrown in the air, and you see that the hammer is following a parabolic arc uh, through its center of gravity, so the center of gravity tends to be near the head of the hammer because the head is very heavy. Uh, but if we look uh, frame by frame, or go a few frames, uh, then what you'll see is that the rotation is uh, at a constant rate. So uh, down below we see the hammer starts out at this angle, a few frames later it's turned 90 degrees, the same number of frames later it's turned another 90 degrees, the same number of frames later another 90 degrees, uh, so forth. Now uh, this type of turning motion is not the only kind of a rotation that can occur as something is flying through the air. Uh, there's also a tumbling, which is a more complicated motion, and in fact it is not cyclic. It uh, does not repeat. Um, it uh, indeed is very complicated to, uh, to describe. Uh, now one saving grace is that the center of the brick uh, which is the uh, uh, center of gravity for the brick, uh, that still follows a parabolic arc. But the uh, rotation is um, rather irregular. Now, uh, it turns out there's a theorem called the tennis racket theorem, which uh, explains why uh, objects uh, spin or tumble. And basically the tennis racket theorem says that uh, for objects, they have a long axis, a short axis, uh, those two are perpendicular to each other, and uh, when you have an object flying through the air and it's turning, if it's turning around the uh, short axis or the long axis, it will spin, but there's a third axis that's perpendicular to those two, and if it turns around that axis, it will tumble. So uh, here's some um, frames from a video of a tennis racket which is thrown into the air and uh, in this case it's spinning around the long axis. Uh, this long axis uh, the racket has the lowest uh, rotational inertia for uh, spinning. So uh, in this case it has a rather regular turning motion uh, of spinning. Now the short axis uh, is when we have the um, racket uh, flat and it's turning around um, that axis as you, as you see here. It's rather similar to the kind of turning motion that we just saw with the hammer. Now in this case uh, we also have a regular periodic cyclic uh, spinning, as you see in these frames. However, the third axis, which is perpendicular to those, is uh, this sort of somersault axis, and when the racket is thrown uh, that way, it will almost always uh, tumble, so it's unstable to uh, going into a tumbling motion. By the way, this racket had no strings, so uh, this has nothing to do with air resistance. It's entirely due to the shape of the object and the axis about which it's turning. 
So uh, all objects, including uh, irregular objects, have these uh, three axes. And uh, if you play a little bit with the, with the motion, uh, you'll sort of figure out uh, which is the spinning axis, uh, which are the two spinning axes, the long and short axes, and then the one perpendicular to those is going to be the tumbling uh, axis. It's a little bit complicated for uh, to say for a person because uh, people change their pose uh, depending on how they orient their arms and legs so that these axes uh, can change depending on the pose. We'll get to that in, in another tutorial. Uh, um, another example you could think of is, say, a skateboard. A skateboard um, has a long axis down the board, um, a short axis um, straight up and down through the center, and if you take a board and, and try to turn it along those along those axes, uh, around those axes, uh, you'll probably be able to get a spinning motion. But if you try to rotate it end to end, say throw it and try to rotate it end to end, it will almost uh, always go into a tumbling motion. Now, if we have an object that is symmetric, like a football, so the football um, has a long axis, but uh, then around that axis the uh, football is symmetric, then it doesn't uh, tumble, uh, but when it spins it can wobble. So you see that in this, um, if you ever throw a football, you know that it uh, can go into this uh, type of wobbling motion. Another example is uh, if you have a like a flat plate. So uh, let's look at some videos of those. So here's a football just being tossed around. So hopefully you see that um, wobbling motion as it's turning. And here's a uh, flat plate. I have a, a green line drawn on it to help you see the rotation. So if you go um, frame by frame, you'll see that, uh, for example, here, the plate might spin a half turn in eight frames. And during that time, it does one complete wobble. Uh, that is the sides tilting up and down and then returning to the original uh, tilt angle. Uh, now, when, um, something is spinning and oh, a symmetric object like the plate or the football when it's spinning and wobbling you can uh, spin the football faster or you can spin it slower uh, but in all cases the ratio of the number of spin rotations to the number of wobble um, oscillations uh, always stays in the same ratio depending on the shape of the object. It's different for a football than it is for, for a plate. Uh, and the wobble radius uh, does not affect the frequency. So if you ha throw a football with a tight uh, spiral so that uh, the wobble radius is a very small wobble, so it's almost a perfect uh, spin, uh, it will still have a wobbling frequency uh, which depends on how quickly it's it's spinning. So uh, whether you throw it well or poorly, uh, you still get the same um, wobbling, uh, just uh, possibly at a, with a smaller radius. So in uh, summary, an object thrown in the air may spin or tumble depending on its shape and axis of rotation. So that's just a general object of general shape. Uh, by the tennis racket theorem, spinning occurs when the rotation axis is along the object's long axis or short axis, the uh, axis of minimum rotational inertia or maximum rotational inertia. Uh, 
tumbling is the irregular motion that occurs if the middle axis is the axis of rotation, which is perpendicular to the long and to the short. Symmetric objects like uh, discs or footballs don't have a middle axis, so they don't tumble. However, they can wobble as they spin, and the spin and wobble frequencies are linked, and uh, the ratio depends on the shape of the object. We saw for the plate, they were in a ratio of 2 to 1. So uh, it's complicated, but hopefully that clarifies some of what's going on when an object is uh, turning as it flies through the air.